I guess before we start Free Thoughts, um, this is the last of our regular TV episodes, right? Yes, yeah. it is. So perhaps you guys want to, we should go ahead and do our, uh, I, we might have said it somewhere before, it might have been a spoiled surprise from someone, I seem to remember one of them two spoiling it. I don't think it was. I think we've kept it pretty down low this season. Uh, we'll see. Either way, uh, the next four episodes are all going to be movies, each picked by one of us. Yep. Every single one of us got a submission. That's why three of them are bad. Yeah. I'm kidding. We haven't seen one of them yet. With that being said, this is Free Thoughts for Goblin Slayer. So just to... This, any topics we want to expand further on? Anything we want to talk tangentially this, related? This Recommendations? Sh- this show was a struggle. And I think part of the reason why it was such a struggle to get through for me was because I have a couple friends who I think watched it during the original broadcast, Uh and they're very vitriolic about how tasteless um, the first episode or two is. Um, And so I had to keep kind of hearing that every time I brought up that we were watching it. I had to keep hearing someone tell me, oh my god, that show is absolute shit because of all the goblin no-no. You know? And like I I said, I I don't know if... I don't know if it was as hard for the for anyone else as it was for me, but I just had struggled so much with the, with that topic just popping up constantly. I mean, the Goblin No No is unignorable in this show. It's pretty baked into yeah. the premise of the show, rather unfortunately. Yeah, I, I mean, I know I talked a lot about my opinions on it in Free Thoughts. I just, it was hard. Like, it was hard because honestly, if if the Goblin No No had only been mentioned once and then just been something to keep in the back of the mind. This might have ranked higher than some of our other A-ranks for me. Like, actually higher than several other A-ranks. But as a result, this is absolutely bottom tier of A-tier for me. You know? Because the characters are so good. And some of the storylines are actually amazing. And there's so many references to stuff I love, like Dungeons and Dragons and Lord of the Rings. You know? Mm -hmm. And it's rare to see, like, all that kind of stuff that I like referenced with characters I enjoy... Like this, this more felt like, felt like I was like, felt like um, I was. We were playing a D and D game where we got to pick out characters to be in a world and then watch. It, it's interesting. If it, if it weren't for that goblin no no, I could tell this is a show that's basically handcrafted for Seki. Yeah, like this would have uh, this might have even beat out Lord Elmoloy, if Goblin No No hadn't been there. Like this is straight up my alley. And I think the thing is, I. I do like these kind of shows. I mean, I watched Bofuri, you know, I liked Konosuba, that kind of thing. And I like the whole adventuring party, taking on things, the more Dungeons and Dragons style shows. And I loved the the beginning of, I think it was episode three, where they just were like, the the gods made the world, and they just show like a bunch of different societies in bowls on stands, and they're just rolling dice across the screen, because apparently the entire world was just decided by a bunch of dice throws. The entire thing is a D&D game, where the DM wasn't created enough to come up with new characters. Or so you just pulled Lance or Coup. Yeah, exactly. Jeez. Which is so appealing to me, you know? Yeah. Like, actually so appealing. Ooh, even Green Moon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But even with the characters that I didn't recognize the designs of, like uh, Goblin Slayer, right? I still knew he was based off something. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's a pretty fucking awesome armor. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool yeah. looking armor. Especially <laughs> when he gets that red glow and that yeah, mad Oh, God. The, the fucking red eye glow was bomb. Yeah. Oh, that was epic. Although, when he takes off his helmet, because the fact that they don't give him any eyeballs, he looks like a hentai protagonist. <laughs> this is true. Yes, this is true. I, um... I want to say... I, God, I had some of the best, like, um... Oh, there's so many of the food scenes in this show. I am making a video next season about, like, anime food and the way it looks fucking delicious. And there's definitely some screenshots from this show gonna go in there. Because there's a few, like, food times where I'm just like, oh, I want all of that. You know? And there were so many great jokes about dinosaurs, mm-hmm. you know, and cheese. <laughs> I'm pretty sure those were both by the same person. Yes. You, you, know, you, you know, here here's an off, here's an off here, well, not off-topic thought. but Nothing's here's a, off-topic here, now. Yeah, here's, the, here's, a ra- here's a random thought. Um, I can see now that here's the reason why a... Pairing between uh, Goblin Slayer and Priestess will never happen because he's gonna say, "I can't do that because I need you to resurrect me in case I die." <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh, That's um, awful. I know, but it's still great. So I okay, I didn't bring this up before, but in Watertown, right, they face that giant eye thing, mm-hmm. and they are trying so hard to find something to call it. It's a fucking beholder. 
Guys, it's just a... It's literally the cover of the monster manual, The Beholder. That's all it is. Yeah, but I think they get sued for... Yeah, but they can't call it a Beholder, so they're like evil giant eye thingy. Uh, And it's so obvious, and I fucking loved it. Yeah. Ugh. Mm. I really like the strategy that they used to take to beat that thing. It was right. so, it was amazing. Blow it up! I know, and I, I love that because I love hearing Goblin Slayer's second option, which was then we just like hang out in the doorway and hit it until it like dies. Yeah. Hit it till it dies. Because yeah. that's a very me. <laughs> that's also a, I, I appreciated that Al Fan comic because that's like it's a very Dark Souls tactic. You find a strong enemy. And you're like, well, shit, I'm going to run away. Oh, wait, these things de-aggro? Okay, I'll just run away until de right. and then come around and just keep hitting it until it dies. Also, Two strategies, explosions and hit it till it dies. Sounds mm-hmm. good to me. Yeah. Also, uh, and I quote a Water Cat episode, where's Steve Irwin when you need him? That's a character I want to see in Fate. <laughs> Was uh-huh. my actual thought. What I the ro- fuck? I wrote down my exact. It was one of the giant alligator thing. Oh, I was like, "Where's uh, Steve Irwin yeah. when you need him?" <laughs> and then, and then, I my thought immediately went to because of Lancer Koo was in the same episode. My immediate thought process was Steve Irwin would make a great fate character. <laughs> <laughs> he could like unleash a giant crocodile. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. It was just. It was. It was the only thing I thought of. Also, I also wrote during the episode where he brings down the chamber, he's trying to bring down the mountain! That was such a cool scene where they use the mirror and they're like, man, I feel bad for all those goblins on the other side. That was a bunch of rubble Yeah, but that was also very deliberate on Goblin Slayer's part because he managed to wipe out both (laughs) sections of goblins with one move. Yeah. Also, in episode 11, we saw a character we hadn't seen yet, Muscle Lady. And I literally wrote, ooh, muscle lady. <laughs> she had, like, purple hair and dark skin, but she was insanely muscled like a barbarian. Yeah. The Hot Topic barbarian. Yeah! Loved her! <laughs> also, we just, like, randomly saw her then. That was great. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I really, I had, like, a couple things, like, is that Haruhi Suzumiya when we saw, like, the hero... Because I was just writing down, like, what came for... And when everything comes to mind. Yeah, like, for this, for episode five, I wrote down, I'm here for Guild Lady and Goblin Slayer, OTP. Oh, hell no, spiders. I get the cheese, my lacto- my scaly lactose-loving brother. Boom, pockets! That's probably not the best advice. I mean, clubs will kill anyone, but icky. Good for Gilchan. It was like, that was my, my thought, my, my that brain. That was like an entire Goblin Slayer out of context thing. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, because that's what I did, because I figured, like, those would be, like, the things I remembered the most. So, any recommendations based off this show, guys, besides go play D&D? <laughs> go play D&D. Uh, <laughs> go watch Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Batman! <laughs> yeah. Punisher. Daredevil. Dark Souls and Demon Souls. If you want to play something, yes. Um, any anime recommendations? Um, uh. I mean, I'd... Okay. Okay, we can go off, like, the very blatant D&D. Like, if you're a D&D fan and you watch this show, you're also probably going to enjoy the other aspects of D&D. The players fucking around with Konosuba. Yeah. The, or that... Bofuri, where you get, like, stupid stat distribution. Maybe. I was... Overlords definitely also got that D&D. Yeah, like, very D&D-esque yeah. feel. Yeah. If you just like the dark fantasy aspect, I can go point you to something like ReZero. Uh, anything else? Um, I don't know. This is so far out of my normal wheelhouse for like what I choose to watch on my own time mm-hmm. that I genuinely don't think that I have anything to suggest. Funnily enough, despite Lancer Koo actually being in the show, I cannot recommend any Fates based off of this. This is true. <laughs> Do not go watch Fate. But go look up Lancer Koo. <laughs> I guess if you really want to jump off deep end, uh, redo of Healer, oh. I kind oh, of Fate is you know. Kind of, I kind of. Kind of, but not. It, I, it's a di- very different type of show. This yeah. this show is so specifically ripped from, like, directly from D&D and Tolkien verse. Yeah. That it's hard to compare it to another anime because it almost doesn't feel anime-esque. Like, this feels almost like, like a critical role campaign if it was based on Lord of the Rings. Yeah. yeah. Oh, watch the movie. There's a movie of yeah, this Yeah, there's a movie. Well. It covers a different And arc. season two yes. is coming. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I saw the little Goblin Slayer will return. Yeah. I think that was for the movie. But, oh, on Verve? Yeah, at the, on the last episode 12, it says Goblin Slayer will return. If it was in the episode, it's for the movie. If it's if it who was cares? just on the uh, Verve, it, there is a season two confirmed. Yeah, so, so who cares? Either way. Who knows? Yeah. I don't think I have any other particular thoughts, you know? I think we covered it pretty well. Mmm. Fish. 
<laughs> oh, I will say this. Um, the manga does actually have... I actually haven't fully read up to, like, the full entire thing of the uh, whole entire episodes, Mount, but, like, there are some stuff that is missing, and also it's a slight bit darker, so take... Like the manga. Read at your own risk. Yeah, free at your own risk. Be yeah. careful. Trigger warnings apply. Yeah. Yeah. With that being said, I think we've uh, covered everything. We've are again our oh yeah, I guess we should say the first movie that we're watching. Uh the first movie is Saga Realm's of Tanya choice. the Evil of the, the movie. Yeah. Yes. Realm Shifter's Choice. Yes. See you then, guys, or actually no, we've recorded it already. So we'll see you sometime later. Yeah. You'll see us earlier on. Bye. Like, yeah. comment, subscribe.